Hello, and welcome to AIM International's preparatory tutorials for the Information Certification Exam. I'm Steve Weissman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group, and a certified AIM training instructor in the realm of content process and information management. I'll be your guide as we review the exam's major domains of expertise, and I'll tell you all you need to know to earn that passing grade. Today's subject is email management, a key part of this special certification which AIM created to support you as you solve your organization's existing information-related problems and plan for the future. For 60 years, AIM has been the leading nonprofit association helping users understand how to best manage documents, content, records, and business processes. Email in many ways embodies a parallel infrastructure to organizations' main IT universe, not in the least because it kind of originated that way way back when. So it can be useful to understand the basic structure of an email system itself and the backup and archiving practices surrounding it as you integrate messages into the mainstream of information management. Fortunately, the fundamentals aren't especially complicated, even if that mainstreaming can be. This module is part of the Capture and Manage Knowledge Domain, one of six within the certification program. In it, we'll talk about such key concepts as basic architecture, storage and backup, and archiving. Architecturally, email boils down to messaging-enabled applications within the organization, on the right side of the diagram in this slide, and encompassing collaborative apps, workflow, and the like, as well as email itself. It also includes a backbone, in the center, for routing and policy enforcement. And it includes a secure gateway that communicates with the Internet, which is on the left. Depending on the situation, all this may be arranged more or less rigidly as dictated by any preferences for a more closed client-server computing setup, a more open connection to a web-based engine with either a formal email client application or simply a browser, or other considerations. But they all pretty much work the same way, with receiving, of course, working in the opposite direction, and with both functions typically including connections to a file store someplace to support the sending and saving of attachments, and backup and archiving systems to the right of the applications on the slide. The way messages are stored, backups are made, and archives are kept is important because they all have an impact on how findable and shareable the information they contain ends up being. Remember, it's not that long ago that emails were simply out there and not thought of as things that needed to be managed in the same way as other information resources. After all, the thinking went, storage is cheap, so we can just keep everything. And if we need to find it, well, Outlook and Exchange have search functions. But what about emails that have been archived elsewhere, or simply saved to someone's desktop? And what about the people searching from within other applications? And what of the attachments? Consider, if you will, the real-life example on the screen now a poor user seeking ways to search across multiple Outlook PST files. The fact that responders posted links and references to tools and techniques to help this person is irrelevant, although possibly helpful. It's irrelevant because it's just so obvious this organization's emails were afterthoughts at best. And now that a judge has asked to see something buried within them, the issue is front and center, and potentially costly in terms of dollars and time. You see. How messages are kept makes a big difference in terms of how much value they provide. And PST files are just the beginning of the chase, since there are other email storage formats out there, like Mozilla Thunderbird, to name one, and plenty of locations to cover, like shared files, mobile devices, webmail servers, which often aren't even open to broad queries, and backup tapes, which likely even aren't online and available for searching without special requests. If you're paying any attention at all, you have noticed that these issues sound an awful lot like the ones you face elsewhere in your information management program. And that's precisely my point. These considerations must be taken into account if your emails are to be backed up and archived as they should be, as just another information type. Why? Because that's exactly what they are. And speaking of archiving, the more emails come to be viewed as records-like creatures, the more the established principles of archiving come into play. Offering more than just long-term storage, 
Email archiving applications index the messages they operate upon and provide quick searchable access to them, independent of the original users of the system. Every case is different, but here are some good best practices for the function. Manage the process centrally rather than hold individual users responsible for it. They'll never do it, or they'll do it but without enough consistency to be useful. Centralization also eliminates unnecessary duplication, identifies and links threads, provides access to more than one user, and goes far to assure legal compliance. You want to support the ability to search and retrieve quickly, especially specific messages or attachments. This is one big difference between backup and archiving, the former being great for wholesale restores, but not granular search. Ensure preservation first, then focus on deletion. This requires policies that go beyond retention, like legal hold, which creates exceptions for messages and documents that are under the litigation microscope. It may also require storage media that can last or be readily refreshed after many years to accommodate circumstances like HIPAA's requirement that patient information be kept for the life of the patient plus nine years a span that likely will outlast even the most modern of today's archiving media. As a corollary, separate your data from your applications so files can be opened without the native app. Many adhere to standards like XML and PDF to help make this a reality. And finally, include email as a core compliance or records practice in order to foster cooperation, coordination, and support of your email management initiatives. This module has explained these key concepts for email management. Basic architecture, storage and backup, and archiving. Having now completed it, you may next wish to review the section on how to identify when to manage emails more formally and which ones to manage that way. The material you have just reviewed is part of a broader program of study that prepares you to take the information certification exam. This proctored test consists of 100 multiple choice questions and is delivered electronically by Prometric. You'll have two hours to complete it, and upon passing, you'll earn a professional certification that's valid for three years. For more information, please visit www.aim.org slash certification. Thank you.